This morning in court, I heard a very common complaint. Psychologists agree with some spouses that the compulsion to spend money is a major concern and source of friction. Complaints about spending money 24-7 brought today's couple into divorce court. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, Ms. Ottinger and Mr. Fears. The two of you have been together for seven years, but you do not want to be together anymore. Uh, you have a request, a, an economic request, because you think he has absconded with some of your goods and you would like me to uh, give you the value of that. But before we go there, Mrs. Ottinger, why don't you tell me about your relationship and why we ended up in divorce court today? Okay, like I said, we've been together for about seven years now. Um, during the course of us being together, we broke up for about six months. He dated a, another woman. Um, we decided to get back together. Um, and then while he was home, it was good for a few months, and he proposed to me on my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maybe about eight months ago, I was getting ready to get in the shower. I took the ring off, got out from the shower, came back up, couldn't find the ring. Searching everywhere for this ring, like all over the house, tearing the house apart. For about two weeks, I searched for it, like, like everywhere. Just couldn't right. find it. So finally, I'm going to say about three weeks ago, I, well, I said something to him, you know what I mean, about losing it. Um, he was upset. Uh, why would you, you know, put it down? How could you be so careless? Careless, that kind yeah, of thing. yeah. basically said. So I'm going to say about three weeks ago, I have a suitcase that has, like, receipts and, you know, documents, stuff like that. Well, I have this one little pouch in there, so... Something told me to go in there and look. So I go in there and look, and there's this pawn receipt for engagement rings. So I'm like, unless he has another girlfriend and bought her a ring, I'm like, confused. So I'm like, all right, before I go over the deep end, I was like, let me go ask him, you know, what's, what's this up? about? Because it was like folded in a 50 million and one little mm -hmm. folds. Like right. I had to, you know. So I went to him, I'm like, you know, what's this receipt? And he's like, oh, well, I found your ring four months ago and I went and pawned it. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, you're going to go and pawn it and not even tell me you found the ring? Like, who does Mr. that? Mr. Fierce, did you pawn the ring? Yeah, I pawned the ring. I mean... Now, how could... Let me ask you this, though, Mr. Fierce. How could you let the woman feel like she lost it and, feel, and, and tear up the house for months before you let her know that you had already found it and... and gotten was, rid of it? I was already, you know, having my suspicions about things anyway, so me suspicions personally... Suspicions about what? I mean, I just felt like, you know, things weren't going the right way. I just felt like things, you know, her attitude was changing, uh, you know, just like everything was just feeling Give different. Give me an example of what was feeling different. I mean, just like the way she talked to me, the way, you know, we usually be a lot closer than we are, you know, as far as um, romantic, you know, mm -hmm. kissing and hugging, and we and speak to each that? other. And um, I, uh, I just felt like the magic was leaving the relationship, and you so know. Why wouldn't you go to her and say, "Hey, babe"? I was just being evil, I guess. At that okay. point, you know, I, you know, that's as honest as I could be. I was just being evil. Well, do you think she was cheating? Uh, I had my suspicions, like I said, you know. What what suspicious things was she doing? But never said anything to me. I mean, besides, like you know, talking to my you know, people that I used to deal with. You know, I, I do music, so... She's talking to people you used to deal with. I mean, people you used to go out with? Yeah. Did you used to go out with guys? No. <laughs> so she was talking to other women? Yes. And and you found that suspicious? Uh, yeah, I found it suspicious because it was weird. I'm like, that's my ex-girlfriend. You're my current girlfriend. People usually, you know, they usually hate each other. You know, it's not usually but they don't, a but get isn't along that, thing. Isn't that okay, though? That. I mean, if you get if they get along, what's the what's what's the problem? Uh, Why does that hurt you? It's just weird. Huh? It's I different. Know. I would admit that. Yeah, it's weird. But why is it a problem? I, I just felt like it was a problem because you know maybe the ex you know might influence her, say anything to her based or on her you know, or, or tell her lies or anything. It didn't have to be the truth. Why can't you just say, hey, babe, I think it's a little weird that you like Joni? Because sometimes we, you know, we don't, it, 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 we're not able to do that sometimes. sometimes. You're not grown? Yeah, we're, we're grown. <laughs> but it just, you know, no, gets, it gets to a certain level sometimes, you know? He says he was going to buy me another ring. He just wanted to get me that first ring to show 
how serious he was, you know what I mean, about marrying me. So and that was a pre-engagement yes, engagement that's ring? Said. That's what he said. Exactly what he said. Well, it was only a pre-engagement ring anyway. I was going to get you another ring. ring. Yeah, promise ring, ring whatever you want to call it. A friendship ring that you gave to a woman that you've been living with for five years, you gave her a friendship ring. <laughs> That's because he's real friendly. <laughs> Mrs. Ottinger, he says you do have a real jealousy problem, though, Mrs. Ottinger. Is that true? Yes, I do. Do I'm you have lie. any reason or basis for that jealousy? Well, not really. a previous relationship, I know I'm not supposed to bring, you know, baggage into another relationship. Because this is a different dude. Yeah, know? I know. And I just, if he leaves, like, social media open, I'll go in there because of music stuff, you know what I mean? Women commenting or poking him or, you know, inboxing him, emailing him. And, you know, some of these women send him naked pictures and everything in there. Now, are you getting naked pictures? I get naked pictures, but you know what? I'm such a good person, I definitely tell her about it. You know, a lot of times I will bring, I will bring it to her, like, this is what's going on in the inbox. Does he do that? <laughs> well... It's funny, because actually he does, and one day he had it open, and he was sitting next to me, and this woman didn't even say hi. She just automatically sent him a fully bo <laughs> full body naked picture. I'm like, well, why is she know. doing that? Why? Mm -hmm. Who does that? Apparently, I, you know what I mean? apparently a number of people, yeah. because I do see people. People are taking pictures of that situation and sending them all over the place. I don't know why, <laughs> but, but they're doing it. The fact that he brings them to you, though, and shows Not it to you. Not all of them. Do you think he's encouraging these women to send them pics? Because sometimes, you know, there's those free radical women out there. You know, those well, are the, the ones that... It. Hang on. The ones that aren't, aren't attached to anybody, and they just throw out stuff to see if they can rattle somebody else's situation and kind of ease their way into it. Maybe these are just free radical chicks mm -hmm. that are trying to start something at your house. They call it a thirst trap. So in case you happen to be thirsty that day... <laughs> They, they send you a uh, mm -hmm. drink of water see gonna, yeah. to see if you will. Uh, and he drinks it. And he drinks it. First whole lie. No, I didn't take money out. Well, I guess the imaginary, you know, other person that lives with me and has a car took the money out. I just assume. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Another one of your major complaints, Ms. Ottinger, is that you say he's terrible with money and often <laughs> leaves you in a position where you don't have funds for the basics. Why don't you tell me what's he doing? Uh, he buys games with the money. Um, weed with the money, dirt bikes, whatever, just stuff that's not a priority. Won't go, you know, don't pay on a bill. And when he does it, he doesn't even tell me. I'll go to the store to go food shopping, go to swipe our debit card, it'll be declined. I'll be like, how? When, you know, there's money in there. So, of course, I gotta leave the store. I look embarrassing with a whole cart of food, you know, so I'll go out, I'll call the bank, you know, get the last transactions and here money was taken out and then I'll go to him and First whole lie, no, I didn't take money out. Well, I guess the imaginary, you know, other person that lives with me and has a card took the money out. I just assume, you know, like, he'll, he'll lie about it. Mr. Fears, are you, are you spending money uh, without due regard for the necessities of the home? Uh, I feel like the money I do spend, and, it, you know, it's, it gets excessive sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the money I do spend, I feel like, I, I, I do that because either I want to get away, I want, my, I want to get my mind away, I want to go somewhere different, or yeah, feel like dealing high. with the drama. <laughs> you know. So, so you do agree that sometimes your purchasing is excessive. I agree, one hundred percent. Do you agree that the purchases that you make sometimes preclude you or her from providing for the household adequately? I feel like that sometimes. Yeah, so you're but, not just using discretionary times, income. You know, sometimes you, you, you'll you take the light bill money and go buy yeah, weed yeah, with I'm it. Not, yep. I'm, not, I'm, not buying, yep. I'm not being excessive with it is to the point where, you know, we're not, not making rent on time and stuff like that. You know, it's just mainly, you know, water bill. I might skim on the water bill. I might skim on an electric bill, especially skimming Skim. on the cable and bill. And that doesn't bother you at all. That doesn't work. And that's me. 
I would be worried not paying the water bill, because I want water. <laughs> so, does it not concern you? Or do you believe that Ms. Ottinger, well, if I ha I'm light, Ms. Ottinger will, will make it up? I pay a majority of the water bill. And the, most of the utilities, I pay a majority of. Because I, I allow oh, the electric her. so he can play that game. That's why he's gonna make sure that bill gets That's paid. That's why I pay that in full <laughs> a lot of the times. You know, and the, like I said, every it's, now and then I'll But it doesn't skim. bother you that you're so tight on money that you may or may not have money for utilities? Yeah, it bothers me. Then why do you continue to do it? Because I, I feel like that's my only escape other than going ballistic. You know, I want to go out and do the things I want to do after work. You know, I want to smoke a little weed. You know, I got to tell you, I don't know what it is with, 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 with society or whatever's going on that, that it, it's we're either having sex or buying stuff. <laughs> that's all we do is have sex and buy stuff. And, and, and that's the only two things that people can choose from for an activity to strain their mind. I mean, nobody reads books, nobody goes to, goes to museums, nobody, you know, you have a hobby, you know, you can you make doll houses or something. I don't know, but buying stuff and having sex, both of which can be very expensive, especially if you're not using birth control. Mm. So, I mean, I would, I would, I would ask all of us <laughs> to find some better things to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Instead, I gotta get yelled at like I'm one of the kids. If I come in the house too late, you won't let me in the house. It's like 12.30, sometimes when I don't have a ride. You got the man on a curfew? Do you agree with Christine that Joseph needs to put down the video games? Vote now, call 855-70-DIVORCE. Make your vote count. Call 855-70-DIVORCE and get your exclusive offers. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. Fears, we've been talking about you a lot, and I want to give you an opportunity to express your concerns about Ms. Ottinger, one of which is that you believe that she treats you like a child. Why don't you explain to me her behavior and how it's bothering you? I, I, it's like me and the kids came from the same place. It's like we were nurtured on the same nipple. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, I go in the kitchen, I make a dish or I use a dish, she's immediately, wash that dish, uh, do this, do that, take the garbage out. I'm like, you know, we do have kids here old enough to do that. You know, I work all day. I come home, I want to relax and do this and that. Instead, I got to get yelled at like I'm one of the kids. If I come in the house too late, you won't let me in the house. It's like 12.30. Sometimes when I don't have a ride... You got the man on a curfew? Yep. Listen, and when I don't have a ride from work sometime and I get home... Any later than 12, 31 o'clock, I got to knock on the door and I got to bang on the door. Sometimes the police come and tell me I got to sleep somewhere else. Or he can sleep on the bench. Then, Ms. Ottinger, seriously, you, you lock the man out well, because I he's do coming have in. A bench out Ms. Ottinger, let me tell you something. One of your problems is that you don't know when to be quiet. Mm. You're sitting here over talking to me. That's why this man ran off with the ring and didn't tell you about it because he's sick of you. Mm. Sick of all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would take any man to the pawn shop. Do you treat Mr. Fears like a child? I, I do. I'm not going to lie, I do. And why? Sometimes I actually judge. I don't even realize I'm doing it, to be honest with you. Like, he'll have to sometimes bring it to my attention, and then I'll say, I didn't even realize I was, you know what I mean, talking to you like that. She has what I call extreme mother instincts. Extreme, extreme mother instincts. mother instincts, too. Yeah. Well, I just yell at him right along with the kids, so for they're getting yeah, yelled yeah, at. Well, well, it's more convenient. You yeah. just <laughs> all at once, just yeah. holler at everybody, get it all done. Get it all done. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to come at him separately. Yeah. How's that working for you? <laughs> Not too good. Obviously, we're here. So, <laughs> what is the one thing that she does if I could get her to stop? That would 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 I... put you back in in the. Let's go for it mode. The jealousy. The jealousy. 
And is that all about checking social media and all of that? Are there other things going on? I wish it was all about on? social media. But what, what else about, is it about? We're talking about coming to the job. We're talking about we're at the mall. We're talking about, you know, because I cut hair, What does too. she do when she comes to the job? Oh, God. <laughs> She'll come in there and she'll cause a scene. And a lot of times people want to hear it. They'll walk out on me, my do, customers. Do you come in and f fuss about Not women right at a shop? No. I mean, if he's sitting there, the girl got the boobs all out, she give him the googly eye, smiling. I'm like, what is this smiling for? What, what's she smiling at you for? What you you service. giving her something to smile about? Like, let me know. Customer service. He's in a barber shop that's in a room full of people. There are other people getting their hair done. Do you really think something illicit is going on while he's cutting her hair, boobs out or not? I mean, if I'm not there, I don't know what's going on. That's the way I feel. In divorce court, couples tell me everything about their relationships. Want to share your experience? Join the conversation on our Twitter page at Divorce Court. On Facebook, check out other fans and their intimate issues. You know everybody has something to say about love. What's on your mind? Now, Mr. Fears, you're being childish with that money thing. If you're going to be a man, you've got to be a man all the way, all day, all the time. And no man can ever be with a woman or any kind of family and not make sure that the household isn't cool. And to the extent that you are doing things to allow the utility bills not to get paid, that's just not cool. That's unmanly. It's boy-like, and you can't do it. I don't care where, what you're upset about. A man handles his business, and he does not put his family in harm's way. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Now, Mrs. Zottinger, let me tell you what your problem is. You are not self-aware. You feel, then you do, and there's no thinking thrown in between. You're frightened, you're insecure, you're worried. If I don't know what that... But, so you're going to have to control all the situation by in, being up in it, on it, over it, around it, looking. Don't go to a man's place of business and mess with his money. That doesn't make any sense at all. That makes you less secure. There are going to be women everywhere he goes because this is life. We live in a country where women and men can mingle freely. You have to be secure enough in your own womanhood to realize that this man either loves you or he doesn't. And he does love you because you're a lot of mouth, you're a lot of trouble, and he's still with you. So you have to take that for what it is, and you have to be secure in that. Don't go down there looking for... There's going to be women with booty shorts, this, that, and the other thing. I can go off and not see my husband for a couple of weeks. I'm never worried about what he's doing because I take care of my business when I'm home. We don't even worry about outsiders because we, we got the inside on the lockdown. And when the inside ain't right, we talk about what's happening on the inside. That's what you need to do. You've got to be, hey, that man ain't going nowhere because he's got me here. And you got to believe that. And until you believe that, you are going to drive this man away. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> you need to be more self-aware. You need to realize that a man does not want to be spoken to in the same manner as a child. And if you're hollering at them children all the time, do you better watch that as well. Because if they get raised in a high-volume household, they're going to have little tornadoes in their head. And they're going to grow up and run their men off, too. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and the rest of the world can't take him if, you, if you're not beating up on him. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, she complains about the video games, but I play those at home. You put, no, I could be, I could yeah, be no. anywhere and, else and, 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 and I will say this, Mr. Fears. You got to pay attention to your woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? Part of insecurity is she doesn't feel like she's important to you. You've got your games, you've got your this, you've got your that, you've got your other thing, and she's just a household convenience, or household inconvenience, depending on what day it is. Women need to feel wanted and loved and cared for, and to the extent that you like this all day long, that makes her feel like she's no, of no value. And women who are, feel they are, have no value have low self-esteem, and people who with low self-esteem are insecure, and insecure people go on your job and fuss at the women that, whose hairs <laughs> you're cutting. Do you understand what I'm try trying to tell you? So you can build, you can build if you both want to grow up and get it right. Now, you want $800 from him for that ring, that pawn ring? Yes, I do. Did you get the ring back? Do you have the pawn ticket? I have the pawn ticket still. Is, is, is the ring still there? Yeah, it's still there. Go get the ring back and give it to her, why don't you? Yes, ma'am. It is so ordered. This matter is adjourned.
this cliche is so overused, I hate to use it myself, but I do not have a choice. Communication is the key to any relationship, and you can't have good communication if neither party is willing to listen.